Hello dear YouTuber friends and I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video. This is Back to Basics with Microsoft Flight Sim Part 55. My continuing Back to Basics series. Hopefully teaching a good few of you the basics of flying. In this one we're going to cover again NDB navigation. NDB ADF navigation in fact. Now I did do a previous video on this in my Back to Basic series. I want to cover this one again for Flight Sim 2024. And there's a couple of specializations with settings that you need to be aware of for certain NDB uh, navigational points. So that is what we're going to cover in this video. So let's not dilly dally, let's get on with this video. So let's first talk about NDB navigation and where to find them or how to find them. Now I am an ambassador for Navigraph Charts and this is my preference generally when I'm flight planning. When I want to do stuff like this, absolutely Navigraph is the place to go for me. Again, I'll link a video about Navigraph below. That's the reason a whole lot of us use it. Now I'm going to be setting off from London City Airport, which is there. The NDBs in Navigraph are these ones with the sort of inner circle and outer circle. They're all over the UK, as you can see. You can actually click on one. I'll click on the Chilton, because it's one I'm going to be heading towards, and it will tell you it's an NDB. And basically, it just sends out radio frequencies. It's like a, think of spokes of a tyre, so wherever you're flying it will send out a frequency for you to fly towards it you just need to tune into it which is this frequency and then using your uh, NDB uh, indicator which I'll show you later you can just set a heading towards it and fly towards it so if your fancy smancy uh, GPS system fails or it has a breakdown or mal malfunction you can always rely on NDB navigation I think it was used for many, many years, way before GPS and all that stuff came in. So there we go. We're going to take off from London City. I've clicked on children. That'll be our first one. Make a note of this. If you want to follow along, set off from London City, runway 27. And try these. Chilton. I've wrote it down myself. 277. And the name of it. Oh, there's one called Henson here. And I want to make my set my way, just for example, towards Oxford here. And the war over Oxford will actually lead you to Oxford uh, Airport, which is there, as you can see, EGTK. So if you want to do that flight, that's a fun flight to try. Chilton asked first protocol, then Henson. So let's get back London City there. Chilton first, I've made a note of that, then I'll fly to Henson. Oh, Henson. 433.5 Now keep a note on that one people 433.5 I'm going to show you how you can actually tune in to decimal uh, frequencies which have a number after the, after the last decimal Oh sorry, a, a decimal after the last number as you can see here 433.5 I've made a, a note of that, do that yourself And if you want to fly to Oxford then you've got Oxford at 367 Again, oh, did I click on the right one there? Make sure, because it's, it's also Oxford Airport. There we go. Oxford NDB 367.5. So make a note of that if you want to fly on. I'll do the first couple to give you the idea. Now, if you look at the, each of them, you can see the range or power. And they've all got different ranges of power. Oxford here, it's less than 25 miles. Click on Henton. 25 to less than 50 okay so between 50 and 25 miles now which one Chilton yeah same so you know you get good range so effectively taking off from London City I might be able to tune straight into Henton 
but I want to show you the mechanics behind it. So I'll be doing Chilton first, then Henton. And if you want to continue, you can go across country with this. Look at them. They are all over the place, all over the UK, and actually all over the world. So there you go. That's a quick explanation of them. Make a note of the ones that you want to fly along in your route. And I'll show you how to put this into practice. So we're set up at London City Airport Runway 27 in our snazzy looking Cessna 152 livery. Psychedelic livery, it's default. You should be able to find it if you go to the liveries. I quite like it. And in the aircraft, I've got my uh, Instrument View 3 set up to show my ADF panel and my ADF uh, bearing indicator panel here so I can get to them quickly with instrument view 3. So you can set up something similar uh, on the default Flight Sim 2024 keyboard. I think it's shift and free but you have to set the instruments up. You have to set the view up first and then save it as instrument view. I've got it set up as instrument view 3. You can save it as whatever. As whatever. And what we do, these ADF knobs down here, so let me go through this again. Make sure that it's on what I've got them set to here. And these are by default when you spawn in. The ADF knobs, remember before I showed you Chiltern 277 frequency and Henton 433.5. We want to tune into Chiltern first, which is 277. For some reason in Flight Sim 2024, we should get numbers displaying here. They can sometimes display and then other times they don't display. But don't worry, if you hover over the knobs, you should be able to see the numbers there. So you can see I've got an 8. I just need to mouse down with my scroll wheel. So I want to get to 277 for Chilton. 27. And watch this needle. Oh no, it won't deflect yet because it's we're on the ground. We can't pick up on the frequency on the ground as we're too low. But 277, but do keep an eye on that. You'll see it deflect once we get just a little bit of altitude. Reset my cockpit view, make sure my altimeter is correct. Throttle up and release the parking brake. Just make sure that my rudder is behaving fine. It is indeed. It does give realistic rudder. If you go full throttle and you've got not testing your rudder out, you may run into trouble, I've noticed, in Flight Sim 2024. I've been learning that. Right, so throttling up and we'll take off. Remember, we got flaps in as well, so we'll raise our flaps. Oh, that's fine. Not the most graceful takeoff. This is a very fluid aircraft, the Cessna 152, I've noticed. Small movements can really make a difference in this aircraft. Have you noticed? Watch in a moment. You watch this needle. See, it's deflected. And we know Chilton is this way. So if we come down to that panel, we just need to head in that direction. Mentally impose this needle on your heading where you should be heading to. And that's going to make it easier for you as well. But I can see that needle to the right of me there. I can see I'm heading straight towards Chilton. Now Chilton, we're in the Cessna 152. It's going to take a bit of time for us to get there. Because it's actually past all these buildings, past Heathrow, which is way up there. So what I'll do, rather than leave you watching me... For the next 15 minutes fly towards that NDB. I'll bring you back when we get closer to it. So here we go. We got Heathrow to our left there. Just off our left wing. We're flying past it. And we'll be getting close to that Chiltern NDB. We'll be flying over it soon. Once we do that, watch the needle. Keep an eye on it. This will start deflecting around quickly. Which means we're flying over it and then it's soon going to be behind us. Got to get back into my default view. As soon as you take your eyes off the aircraft, the Cessna is so fluid in the air. I can only imagine this is what it feels like in real life. It's really fluid in Flight Sim 2024. Take your eyes off what you're doing. You're coming off the heading <laughs> and you're descending or... Uh, descending or... Uh, climbing quite rapidly so there you go any moments now now climb to an altitude of what you wish as long as you're over say a thousand feet you should be able to pick up on the ndb i'm keeping myself between 2000 
uh, one and a half thousand and two thousand feet altitude. And I'm not trimming there, but the trim, yeah, you always have to make slight adjustments here in the Cessna 152, I've found. And with your throttle as well. There you go, let's get that back down. And any second now, I'm just, I'm just keeping myself on that heading straight towards Chilton. Keep an eye on this on the right. You will see. And I want to show you the effects right now. I think the range is about 50 nautical miles for the NDBs. It will tell you in something like Navigraph what their range is. I could easily tune in to my next NDB. I'm close enough, Henson. But I want to show you the effects of flying through or over, shall we say, an NDB station. So any second, just waiting for that needle to fully deflect. That's when I know I'm flying through it over it yeah you see it's going round quickly now now I'm not gonna chase it you can see that needles deflecting let's give you a closer view you can see it's deflecting quite a lot now it means we're flying over it and it's suddenly it's going behind us but maintain that heading you should see it going directly behind us now pretty much there so that means we've flown over that NDB what I'm gonna do I'm gonna active pause and what I'll bring you down to this view again. I'm going to tune to Henson now. Remember, Henson is 433.5. So we can dial in 433. Oh, how do we get to decimal 5? Yep, 433. But how do we get to that decimal five? Well, to do this, this is where the specialized settings need to take effect. Go to settings and go to controls. Now, I'm doing this via keyboard myself. You can set it up on one of your controllers. But I've got keyboard selected. I'm just going to make sure it's in the right profile. I'll start typing. It is. Yeah, I'm going to start typing in in the search box. Do the same because you probably these are not set up by default. ADF. Just type in ADF, and it's these two, increase and decrease, ADF1. We've only got one ADF panel in our Cessna 152 in a way. Make sure it's ADF1. Frequency, fraction, and carry. So increase and decrease, ADF1, frequency, fraction, and carry. What that will do, I'll show you in a moment, on your last digit, if I, I've got basically, basic for me, control, up arrow, for increase, control down arrow. For decrease, ADF1 frequency, fraction and carry. Don't set anything else up there if you want to affect these. These are the two. So just type in ADF. They'll be halfway down and it's these two we need to set up. Let me show you what this will do. So fraction and carry, what does that mean? Just get into the sim again. Just going to active pause again. On my last digit, which is the 3, if I cursor a uh, control key and cursor up, it will increase by fractions. So 433.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. So we need to get to 5. It's a shame this display is not showing because you'll see the number. As soon as I press the button for increase or decrease fraction or carry, you'll see a little dot come up here. Now, I can't get that display up at the moment, but I could still do do this. I'm going to use my increase ADF. Let me just remind you again, because this may be a bit confusing for some if I don't show this. ADF. Just going to type in ADF again. I'm going to increase it five times. So it's basically 433 decimal point one, point two, point three, point four, point five. If I press that five times, watch what happens with the needle. So I'm going to increase it, control and up arrow for me. That's where I found it. You can bind it anywhere to whatever setting you want. But I'm going to press this one five times to increase after the decimal five times, which will be 0.5. Hope that makes sense, people. Get your head around that. So control up arrow, one, two, three, four, five. Let's just take a look. Yep, you see the ADF needle has deflected. Well, that was quite good. We're heading straight towards the Henson NDB. Let's take it off active pause. 
And if I come to my left or right, you'll see that needle move. I'm coming to my left, the needle will, will move right. So I need to come back to my right to keep it in my heading. And now I'm heading towards Henting. And you can do that for the rest of your NDBs along the course. If you ever get to one with a decimal, that setting I sh just showed you, increase ADF1 frequency by fraction and carry, or decrease set buttons up for both, or keybinds, you'll be able to get to the 0.5 if they're along your course. Okay, my friends, I'm not going to do the whole flight. That's just to give you an idea of ADF navigation, the old way of navigating the skies. And it's a wonderful skill to have as a backup and a good skill to do for a bit of fun. It's a fun flight doing it via N NDB ADF navigation. Let me know your thoughts on the video. Give it a like if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe for more. And I'll see you soon.